Breaking news! I'm just kidding. It's not really breaking. I mean, it, it's very important, but it's like, it came out like 17 hours ago. I just wasn't home. Real quick, it only takes like five seconds. Just, yo, subscribe, like the video, comment literally anything, and let's get to it. In a postseason interview, Travis Schlenk was asked about all types of stuff like the Hawks roster, how the roster played in the playoffs, and future moves for the roster, and someone brought up John Collins. Schlenk said that he told John Collins he was very proud of the way he played this season. He also said it speaks highly of Collins that he didn't play for numbers as free agency approached, he just wanted the team to win. Another reporter followed these comments asking Schlenk if there was any interest in bringing Collins back in free agency, and Schlenk said, and I quote, I don't know why there wouldn't be. Now this is obviously huge news because Collins said that his first option in free agency is staying in Atlanta and when a team wants a player and a player wants a team and the team has the money to pay him and they just went on a huge playoff run there's a 98.5% chance that that works out don't fact check it though so that's pretty much all the news for now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about you know why do I think John Collins should return how much should we pay him how does he fit with our team blah 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 but if you're just here for the news honestly uh that's all that's all that's it for now now John Collins man I love me some John Collins personally like two years ago he was my favorite Atlanta Hawk uh, one year ago, he was tied with Trey Young for my Atlanta Hawk. Maybe even, I might have even still liked John Collins more than Trey Young last year. This year, I love myself some John Collins. Not, you know, one of my favorite players anymore. You know, I love DeAndre Hunter. Trey Young has gotten even better. Uh, Nyeka Kung, who I'm such a big fan of. Yeah, John Collins, I still love him. And in fact, like for respect of how well he played in the playoffs, I actually copped, um, so a shirt from his uh, clothing line. I, I'm sure you should call it. It's called like the Baptist or Baptist. One of the two. Yeah, I got a shirt, you know, 35 bucks. Pretty expensive, but you know, I, I just thought I could, I would do it. I love him. I really do. But the way he fits with our team and how we need to pay everyone. What? Here's the thing. Okay. John Collins, that is perfectly fine if he's on the team next year. And in fact, it, it seems like a 99% chance that's what's going to happen. I just, I really don't want to pay him over. Let's say a limit of like 23 million. Any more than 23 million. I feel like players who get paid 25 million or more either should have a really good playmaking impact, a really good defensive impact, or should be a second option, a second scoring option on a championship team. Personally, if you're getting that much money, I understand you're also getting money because you're young. I'm pretty sure if John Collins was 30 right now, he wouldn't be getting the same money. I just, I don't know how much better John Collins can get. I think... Some of the things that he needs to do to get better, he needs to get lighter on his feet. He needs to, not not saying he's fat or anything, of course, but like, he needs to learn to, you know, maybe like dribble the ball a little bit better, score on actual isolation um, plays. Because like, a lot of the time, this is how John Collins scores. It's either a wide open three, an alley-oop dunk, a putback dunk, or a post-up mid-range. And that post-up mid-range, I love it. He makes it a lot, like, he, he might be like 66% from the field on those post-up mid-ranges, but that's not really where the game is. Especially like where John Collins isn't, you know, dribbling from from the three-point line and getting into that position. He he kind of just stands there and waits for the post up. And when the post up doesn't come, and you know it was like a pick and roll. Like let's say you know John Collins will be posting up a smaller guard. That means that a slower, larger center or power forward is on Trey Young. I'd much rather have our power forward in the corner, you know, spacing the floor and letting Trey Young isolate on a slower big. Now I, I do think actually Trey Young. He didn't do that as much. He was injured in that game six, but um, against the Bucks. But like, he does need to take advantage. Like when Brook Lopez is guarding you or Giannis. I mean, I understand Giannis is a freak of nature, but like, you're still a bit faster than him when it comes to you know his defense and your offense. Like with the ball, I, I think you need to take advantage of that size um, mismatch of, of you being so much smaller. And I just think the the, the league has really gone away from those post up mid ranges. You know, those fadeaways. I mean, they still happen, but. Especially when you have someone, you know, like when your main player is a guard and you get those switches. I mean, would you rather have a post up mid-range or an isolation that can either turn into a three or literally a wide open layup? Personally, I, I like a three or a wide open layup over a contested mid-range. So yeah, improvements Colin sees to make, you know, defensively, I think he needs to be better, faster, stronger, um, you know, faster. So he can, you know, the, the power forward position where you can't be the center or the small forward, it's so weird. Because a lot of the times, those power forwards are going against, they're either smaller than you, so th those, like, uh, who am I thinking of? Like, let's say Ingram plays power forward, or, like, just some fast dribbling, like Tatum, right? John Collins can't guard Tatum. He can't guard Julius Randle. That was m mostly DeAndre Hunter having to guard Julius Randle, which the power forwards should be guarding the power forwards. I think John Collins, he needs to be faster on his feet so he can guard faster wings like Tatum and Randle. Or, at least, like, bigger so he can guard 
players like Giannis. You know, he wasn't doing a bad job of guarding Giannis. I mean, actually, he kind of was. He got into foul trouble a lot when guarding Giannis. I mean, it is Giannis. But I just think if we're paying you this much and you're not like a Brandon Ingram creating off the dribble or, you know, Jason Tatum or you're like, a, you know, Chris Middleton, just a player who can create their own shot, you need to be a good defender. And that's not what John Collins is. But I'm fine, you know, I'm fine with him being on the team for sure. Like, great. But paying him like he's, you know, someone he's not, I don't really like that. And especially because the way the league is going, you know, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, those are the type of wings you want. They can create off the dribble. They can play defense. They can shoot. They can do defense. Like, play defense. They can literally do everything you want. And now, I feel like, you know, we can't we can't be paying Trey Young $30 million, John Collins $22 million, Cam Reddish $20 million. I, I, And this is assuming, I think, personally, Cam Reddish is just going to go absolutely nuts this season. I, I really do. He's actually, like, the next Paul George. Like, people, people meme about it. I genuinely... But if he puts in the work... Because I'm not going to lie. In the regular season... He show, he's always showed signs, but he's just inconsistent. If he can just get consistent of... I mean, he played exceptional, you know, during, like, shooting, what, 6 for 7 in that game 7? He doesn't have to play that good. But if he could be, like, a, a 38, 39% three-point shooter, free off the dribble, his defense is already amazing. His hustle is amazing. He's just When he's in the game, it is just such a good... It really just helps the team a lot. But we can't be paying him 20 million, Hunter 25 million, Collins 22 million, Trey Young 30 million. Eventually, we're going to have to package players and what i really don't want to do is re-sign collins and then trade him like obviously yes the hawks get assets but i just feel bad like man collins looks like he really wants to be in atlanta i feel like we should just tell him to him straight right now you're not for atlanta or i guess we're keeping him and packaging someone else but i really i, I genuinely believe reddish and hunter will both be better than collins so we're gonna be paying what a fourth option or maybe third option maybe i don't know but fourth option 20 million like, that's cool, but that means we're spending our entire cap on four players, let alone, go, let alone you know, a Kung Wu and Kevin Herter. We're going to have to pay. Bogdan might accept his player option, you know, in, I think it's like in 2024. I just personally don't agree with John Collins being an Atlanta Hawk right now. I'll, I'll love for him, but man, I, I just, I, I don't agree. Now, that's going to be the end of the video. I think I'm going to make one more Trey Young video within the week, but I, I, I am making a lot of Hawks videos, but... I am going to make like a Trey Young, you know, records that he's broken already in the playoffs. But uh, besides that, you know, I just make overall NBA content. So if you like that, just subscribe, like the video. And also soon I will be making like NBA debate videos. It's just I'm trying to, you know, get some other videos off my chest, you know, off season videos because off season in like two weeks, maybe in like a month. I'm going to start doing actual NBA debates with people. So if you're down, let me know. And uh, yeah, just comment anything and peace.